Hey guys, Chris from Adapt Tuition here, and this is video number six of my POA MCQ prep for the July 2020 CSIC exams. If you've missed any of the other videos, I'm going to put a card up there and a link in the description below so you can take a look at all of the other videos and bring your skills up to speed. All right, now I don't want to do a long intro today, I want to get straight into it. So let's go. All right, guys, so let's take a look at number 53 here. It says, based on the information below, what is the capital of Foss Toscott Limited? So wink, wink, nudge, nudge for the names. Anybody who has the, um, the paper ones and has been going through might recognize that name if you piece it together and listen to it. Foss Toscott. Okay, so what do we have? Non-current assets, current assets, current liabilities, non-current liabilities. So that looks like, well, balance sheet information. And what are they asking? Oh, based on the information below, what is the capital? Okay, I was like, wait, where's the question? All right, so what do we know about capital? Well, it's whatever the owner brings in to start the business or to maintain the business, any resource. But what about our formula, our balance sheet or accounting equation? Capital is equal to assets minus liabilities. So what we have to do here is we have to add up our assets. 250 and 100 is 300,000. Uh, add up our liabilities. 80 and 170 is 250. So we take 350 of assets minus 250 of liabilities. That's going to give us 100,000 of net assets or capital. Right? So let's, let's color it. What color do we want? We want the yellow? Yes. Nice. Okay, let's scroll down and to number 54. So what is the main purpose of preparing financial statements such as the income statement and the statement of financial position or balance sheet? So what's the main purpose of preparing these types of things? Well, Remember, think back to some of our earlier videos. The definition of accounting was, yes, bookkeeping, recording, classifying, sorting. But there was also communication of this economic information or financial information to help make more informed financial decisions. So let's, with that in mind, let's take a read of the answers. So it says, to help analyze the profitability of the reporting entity. So those of you who know about ratios will know that we do use the information in the balance, sorry, in the income statement, and yes, maybe the balance sheet to help analyze profitability. But is that the main reason to help analyze profitability? Well, profit maximization is the major objective of most businesses. So maybe let's take a read of the others and see if anything is a bit more holistic than that. Because apart from profitability, what else do we have? Liquidity, activity, and if you go up to cape level, you have the shareholder or gearing ratios. All right. B, to provide information to assist in the making of decisions about the reporting entity and its financial performance. That seems to be on the money there. Let's just take a quick um, read of C and D. All right, so to assess the liquidity position of the reporting entity at a given point in time. So yes, to assess liquidity, we do use it for that, but it's not the main purpose. It's part of the main purpose, sure. All right, and D, to satisfy an obligation to the creditors of the reporting entity. I don't think we necessarily have an obligation to prepare financial statements to satisfy them, right? So C, C, B, sorry, B, 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 B is definitely the answer here to provide information to assist in the making of decisions about the reporting entity and its financial performance. Cool. Let's scroll back up and let's go across and check out number 55. So the preparation of financial statements is useful in which of the following ways? One, it helps with analysis of profitability. Yeah. Two, it helps with assessing employee satisfaction. Nope. Three, it helps with analysis of liquidity. I would say yes. Four, it helps with analysis of efficiency. So we do have efficiency or activity ratios in addition to our profitability and liquidity ratio. So that is a valid answer. So I would say, I would say one, two, and four only. All right, okay, so let's scroll down now and take a look at, wow, what do we have here? Booth Ports, Booth Ports Store, all right. Once again, wink, wink, nudge, nudge for anybody doing the past papers and recognize the name, all right? Add a little list, add a little list, right? Booth Ports Store. So we have statement of financial position of balance sheet as at 31st December 20 XX. So what I need to do here is I need to split my screen so we can scroll down to see the question. So we're going to take a look at question 56. Actually, let's take a look at this first, right? This is a balance sheet, but this is in the old horizontal format where you have, and think about your accounting equation, assets equal to capital plus liability. So that's what we're seeing here. 
capital and liabilities, capital on top here, liabilities below here, and liabilities aren't even, there's not even a heading. We just have the, the, the line items, current liabilities and then 10-year 15% loan. And on this side, we also have assets, and we have them in order of permanence. Remember from the previous video, order of liquidity, order of permanence, right? This is order of permanence. So you're starting with your non-current or fixed assets, and then we have our current assets down here. And as we could see, capital plus liabilities is equal to assets. So this is an old-fashioned balance sheet. I don't know how many of you all were exposed to horizontal balance sheets. And even this one is still kind of back to front, because normally assets would be on the left side to kind of signify them being on the debit side. And capital and liabilities would be on the right-hand side to kind of signify them being on the credit side of their respective accounts. So this is a very old-fashioned balance sheet and kind of back to front. But once again, the information is presented in a way that is very usable. So don't knock it just because the format is a bit off. Learn how to interpret, right? Remember, that is part of your job as an accountant, to interpret information. And even if you don't plan on being an accountant, you're still a human who is going to have to understand things, understand, interpret figure things out right some of these skills that are going to be most useful to you guys when you get into the workforce are learning so learn how to learn unlearning some of these things you learned are not the correct thing and then relearning learning things you may have learned before but may have forgotten all right anyhow let's get back to the question what is the question asking us to do so from the information above answer the following questions what is the value of non-current or fixed assets Okay, so let's go up to the balance sheet. We're going to take these three items, freehold land and buildings, fixtures and fittings, motor vehicles. Stock, debtors, bank and cash, those are all current assets. So just these three, so 560,000 is 560,000 plus 150, I think that's, that's 710, right? Which is not an option, so we need to fix that. <laughs> 710, so that is our answer there. Right, so let's let's just double check the, the the arithmetical accuracy. So 60 and 150 is 210, 210 plus 500 is 710. Right, okay. So just be careful with those things, right? In the event an answer really wasn't there, either make a guess or leave it out. If it was truly an error in the question, they'd have to either give you the mark or cut the question from the exam as a or, or, or from the whole exam. Scrolling down, what is the value? Hold on, let me right. What is the value of current assets? Okay, so we know current assets, stock, debtors, bank, and cash. Let, let's hope I have an answer here, right? So 50 and 70 is 120. 120 and 120 is 240. 240 and 25 is 265. Aha! Right, I have an answer. Lovely. Okay, let's scroll back up. Okay, so I may have to minimize my face or shift it across because of how the layout is on the file. All right, so what is the value of networking capital? So we met networking capital in our previous video, video number five, and we said networking capital is current assets minus current liabilities. So current assets, we just found a total of 265. Current liabilities, we have one figure, which is 75. Nothing else is a current liability. So 265 minus 75 would give us 190. And if we scroll down a little bit more, what is the value of net assets? So net assets is assets minus liabilities or capital. So we have a couple of ways we could work this out and we're gonna work it both ways. So one way is to look at the capital at end. And that's simply 600,000. Can we double check that? How can we double check it? Well, capital is equal to assets minus liabilities. We have total assets of 975 and we have Two sets of liabilities so three so 75 and 300 is 375 and if you take 375 away from 975 guess what you get you get 600,000 right okay cool so what we're gonna do is we are gonna scroll down now I'm just gonna leave it split because I have another booth board store financial statement but it is different as you can see, the assets are now on the left-hand side and the capital and liabilities are now on the right-hand side. And we have um, different values as well. Okay, so let me scroll down so we have the fresh questions. So it says from the information above, answer the following questions. So what is the value of non-current or fixed assets? So it's basically the same question with a different balance sheet. Once again, I, I have done this in previous videos just to give you guys practice on the topics or themes. 
CSEC, in the CSEC multiple choice papers, sometimes they do this exact same thing. They, they, they present information slightly differently to see if they can catch anybody who does not properly know their work. So yes, it seems a bit repetitive, a bit redundant, but I'm doing it for a purpose. It's not just filler. I'm not just trying to fill time. Trust me, I have a lot more questions to bring to you guys. I don't even know if I'll get through all before the exam, but I'm going to try hell hard to do so. So just bear with me. There are some repeats, not, not repeats per se, there are some similar questions, but they're there for a purpose. Okay, so non-current assets, fixed assets. So we're going to go on the asset side, thrill property, furniture and fittings, motor car, Inv nope, not inventory, back up here. So, 750 and 250 is, a, well, that's a million, so a million three. So that's option B here. A million three. Next, what is the value of current assets? So, that's the rest, right? Inventory, receivables, cash at bank, cash in hand. 20 and 80 is 100, 70 and 30 is also 100. 100 plus 100 is 200. All right, scrolling down now. All right, so I may have to shift my face. So if you see it floating around, sorry, if it's distracting. Networking capital. So once again, networking capital. Current assets minus current liabilities. So we just found that our current assets total 200. Our current liabilities is 75. So 200 minus 75 is 125. Hmm. How are we going to put these on TikTok, boy? Well, I'll figure it out. Uh, what is the value of net assets? So once again, net assets is either current assets minus current liabilities or, sorry, no, 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 no. Net assets is total assets minus total liabilities. So we could just pull capital at N as a matter of fact, capital at N, right? So 925. Now we have 1.5 million in total assets and we have 575,000 of the total liabilities. So if you take a million five and you minus a half a million, you get 1 million. 1 million minus 75,000 is 925. Right. Okay. So, guys, those are all the questions I'm bringing for today. All right. So, yes. Yeah, so, today was a bit of a short video, uh, a little shorter than usual. I know some of you guys have been asking for longer videos, but trust me, I'm, like I said, I'm trying to make three of these a week. So, if I make them longer, I'm going to have to cut how many I put out a week because after recording, then I have to edit and it takes time and I have lots of things I'm juggling. But yes, I do want to get more out. If I could put out one a day, I would. Unfortunately, it's a bit difficult to do that. But let's see what happens, right? And you guys, I don't want to take up too much of your time with a long outro. So those of you who joined me for the premiere, thank you very much. I hope I was able to be here and chat with you all this time. The last premiere I did, I was 15 minutes late. I thought I set it for 3.30, but it was set for 3.15. Anyhow, so guys, you know my, my philosophy. You can be anything you want to be. You can do anything you want to do. If you have the correct mindset, which is a growth mindset, the belief that you can do anything you want to do, if and you have to put any work, you cannot get away from the hard work. You are human. We are all humans, so we're all going to experience difficulty, hardship. We're all going to run into some trouble, hit some dead ends. And it's okay to ask for help. We all need guidance. I need it. I needed it then. I still need it now in some cases. And if what you are doing is not working, then you need to try a different approach to it. You need to adapt because change is the only constant. All right, guys. So once again, thank you so much for watching. Please feel free to like, share, and subscribe. And until next time, share the love, share the resources, and I will see you. Bye-bye.